Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my top tips for creating stunning black and white photos. Now, if you've ever tried to convert an image to black and white, chances are you've ended up with a flat, dull photo with none of the original contrast. Now, this can be incredibly frustrating, especially for photographers who are new to Photoshop. Now, to help you create stunning black and white images, I'm going to talk about the key things to understand when shooting for black and white, and also share my preferred methods of converting images to black and white. This is also covered in much more detail in our advanced Photoshop course for photographers on carltaylereducation.com, as well as our individual Photoshop classes. Now, black and white photography, when done correctly, can be incredibly striking. But to create truly stunning black and white images, it requires a bit more than simply adjusting the saturation slider in Photoshop. One of the quickest ways to convert images to black and white is to completely desaturate the color from the image. However, although this is easy, this method results in very flat, boring black and white images. Now, my preferred method is to use the black and white adjustments layer in Photoshop. But let's also take a look at what black and white photography actually is. Now, as the name suggests, black and white photography is any image that consists of only black, white and grey tones. Often it's used interchangeably with the term monochrome. Black and white photography refers to images that only contain grey tones, whereas monochrome images actually may use one colour of various tones of that particular colour. Let's take a look at this graphic to better explain that. Now here, in the shot of the model, we can look at the RGB values in the corner, and they're all equal, 233, 233, and 233. That's in the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. When those values are all equal, then the colour is neutral. Therefore, it is not a colour, it is actually a tone of grey, black, or white. You can see on the background area that the tone is neutral as well. The values are 114, 114, and 114. Zero would represent black or pure black. And a value of 254, 254, and 254 would be just one value below pure white. If we look at the next image, we can see that it looks slightly different. Whilst it looks black and white, it's actually a monochromatic image. If we explore the values, you can now see that those values are not neutral. The red channel is 226, the green is 234, and the blue is 233. So what that means is there's slightly less red in this image, and there is slightly more green in this image than in the other channels. So therefore, we end up with an image that is slightly more cyan and slightly more green than uh, the neutral black and white version. If we look at the background values, you can see RGB as 109, 114, 117 therefore showing more blue in the background and less red in the background than in the equivalent black and white image, therefore giving a cyan bluey tint to the shot. So what makes good black and white photography? Well, black and white photography can certainly look impressive, but it's not suited to every genre of photography. For example, you wouldn't necessarily expect to see black and white product shots of a woman's perfume, or would you expect to see a black and white food image? Landscape and wedding shots, on the other hand, may well suit themselves to black and white photography. Now, regardless of what your subject is, there are a few things worth keeping in mind if you plan to convert your images to black and white. First of all, it's important to learn to understand the difference between luminosity and colour. Luminosity refers to the perceived brightness or darkness of a hue. But to fully understand it, it's important to understand hue, saturation and colour too. Let's take a look at another graphic. Hue refers to a specific colour on the colour spectrum. Saturation refers to the intensity of that hue, with 0% being grey and 100% being the purest colour. Any colour is therefore a combination of both hue and saturation, as well as some degree of luminosity. 
different colours at different hues and saturation levels will therefore have different luminosity values. You can more clearly see the different luminosity values for different colours in this particular illustration. From this, you can see how the colour red, for example, may not work well on a dark background because of its low luminosity value. The same way a light blue subject on a white background may not convert very well. And you can see that yellow is very luminous with a value of 94% in this illustration. Here are two more examples showing that in real world environments. Both of these examples were shot in colour, but you can see how the fashion image with the model in the red dress does not work well in black and white because she almost blends into the background. Whereas the model in the yellow dress does work in black and white because the yellow has a much higher luminosity value than red. And although it's on a dark background, it stands out much more clearly. Seeing and understanding luminosity rather than colour can be difficult, especially if you're new to photography. However, you can also look out for scenes with high contrast, as these will often translate well into black and white. To increase contrast, you can also use filters. Before digital, film was already adjusted to make the subject look good. And by this, I mean that different films had different tonal characteristics or different contrast levels. And photographers would actually select a type of film based on the type of subject they were shooting. However, it was still common practice to use a filter to further enhance the contrast. For example, if photographing a landscape image and you wanted to accentuate the contrast between the bright blue sky and the white clouds, it was common to put a red filter on the end of the lens to increase contrast on that black and white film by cutting out the blue light. Therefore, darkening the sky and increasing the contrast between the sky and clouds. Polarizing filters could also be used to increase overall contrast. Nowadays though, shooting with DSLRs, our cameras are fine-tuned to reproduce color, which means we often have to do a lot more post-processing to get a good black and white image. Now, filters can still be used on our color RGB cameras, but another option is to apply a preset filter in Photoshop. Another important thing to think about in black and white photography is your composition. With no color to distract you in the image, then the elements like composition become much, much more important. It's important to keep in mind the compositional rules, such as the rule of thirds, and look for things like leading lines and interesting textures, because Colour has been removed from the image and you're left only with tonal value and composition. How do you convert a photo to black and white? Now that you understand what makes a good black and white image, the next question is how do you create that black and white image? Well, in theory, simply desaturating an image will result in a black and white image, but it will result in a very flat, boring black and white image. When we think of a good black and white image, those such as famous photographers like Ansel Adams or Peter Lindbergh, uh, you'll immediately notice that their images have high levels of contrast and are rich in tonal values. Simply desaturating the image won't give you this type of result. To achieve the striking black and white imagery often associated with these artists involves slightly more work than simply moving a slider to the left or right. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my preferred method for converting images to black and white is to use Photoshop's black and white adjustment layer. Although there are other methods, I find this one offers the most control, especially when I'm combining it with multiple layers and then masking through those layers to reveal the best parts. You can see exactly how to convert images to black and white using this method in a number of our Photoshop tutorials on carltaylereducation.com, but I'll outline the steps briefly here. First of all, you have to apply the black and white adjustment layer in the adjustments panel. Click the black and white adjustments icon or alternatively go to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. This will open a dialog box and automatically apply a default grayscale conversion. 
Secondly, you then select a preset from the uh, black and white adjustment layer, or you can adjust the color sliders. You can either select from one of those preset options where you can add things like filters, such as red filters, orange, etc., too, or adjust those sliders to adjust the gray tones of the particular colors in the image. Option three, you can apply a tint. By using the black and white adjustment layer, it also allows you the option for adding a tint to your image, very similar to those monochromatic images that we were talking about earlier. Now to do this, simply check the tint box and select the color tint that you want to apply. Other ways to convert your images to black and white include simply desaturating the image or applying a channel mixer or gradient map adjustment. Again, I show you exactly how to use these adjustments in our black and white Photoshop class. I find using the black and white adjustment layer somewhat easier than using the channel mixer or gradient map as it offers a greater degree of control than simply desaturating the image. But whichever method you choose to use, you'll achieve the greatest control by creating multiple layers and using masks through those layers to reveal particular areas of varying contrast from different parts of the image. This is very similar actually to using multi-grade paper and printing techniques back in the days of the darkroom. Now the points I've mentioned here should help you identify what makes a good black and white image. And by following the steps I've outlined and by watching our tutorials on carltaylereducation.com, you'll soon learn how to create your own amazing black and white photos. Get my completely free photography course with no sign up required. You can also access our free 90 page ebook. Just click the link or go to carltaylereducation.com.